I'm Keep Jewel, and this is Comic Smack, your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show, we are taking a closer look at Nightwing issue number 24, betrayed by Blockbuster and now hunted by an army of supervillains. Will Dick survive? Let's hop on in together and find out, shall we? All right, so picking up from where the last issue left off, Nightwing is heading deeper and deeper into the supervillain facility. Tiger Shark had invited a who's who of costumed baddies to try and purchase some weapons off him, and wouldn't you know it, they have to try it before they buy it, so Nightwing is the one they're gonna try it out on. Fighting this many bad guys at once does offer up a cool opportunity for Dick Grayson to show his big bad analytical brain. It would seem as a young boy wonder Batman made him memorize multiple supervillain jackets, and that information is coming in really handy here, being able to name off all of these dudes as well as their powers and weaknesses. Nightwing is literally a walk and talk in TV tropes, only with sticks that he uses to beat you about the head and face. Now across town, Sean, Dick's newest lady love, is having some problems of her own. It seems that the local city council keeps cutting the funding for her supervillain support group and she doesn't know what she's going to do to keep the whole thing running. Further complicating this situation is the return of Pigeon, formerly Sean DeFacer's supervillain mentor. Pigeon's out of jail looking for a place to crash and Sean decided to take her in even though she hasn't told Dick about it yet. Uh oh, this can only end well. Now back with Dick, he manages to make make use of his new Oracle, one of the supervillains in the support group that offers tech support to him. Nightwing's goal is to try and make it past as many of these dudes as possible and down to the basement where he might be able to escape. Hey, fun fact, Tim Seeley does a great job showcasing a bunch of supervillains, but he actually makes one teeny tiny little mistake. He calls the Burned Men, the villains that Green Arrow has been fighting in his own book, the Underground Men. Those guys are different. They're the Nosferatu looking guys. It's strange because clearly Seeley looks to be a Green Arrow fan because Shadow and Count Vertigo show up in this very same issue. This issue actually ends up being an awesome showcase piece for DC Rebirth era villains because even Kid Amazo is there, the new one that the Super Sons have been fighting. Now Nightwing knows he's not cut out to fight a villain as powerful as Amazo, but he's smart enough to realize if he can turn the villains on each other, he might just stand a chance and get out of here alive. The biggest roadblock to all of this is the person that Nightwing thought was his friend, Roland Desmond the Blockbuster. His motivations, though, continue to be quite interesting and complicated. You see, Blockbuster didn't betray Nightwing because he was loyal to Tiger Shark. Quite the opposite. He hates Tiger Shark and wants to ruin his operation. Of that much, he was honest. You see, Desmond has a real sense of civic pride. He loves Bloodhaven. He was born there. He wants to be the one to save the city and not some big Gotham-style superhero. This is why he rigs the place to blow with a giant bomb, knowing full well that Dick will stay behind to try and disarm it, saving all the other bad guys and not pursuing Blockbuster. And yeah, that's basically how the comic begins to wind down. We get a giant big boom and we don't know if Nightwing made it or not. He probably made it, but again, they're trying to build drama here. So that was Nightwing number 24, everyone, and overall I thought it was a really solid arc. It's cool to see Nightwing come up against all these different supervillains. Tim Seeley writes a very tactical Nightwing while also giving a lot of love to some of these other characters. I would love to see him work with them in the future down the line in another Nightwing story. I'm also really finding myself becoming a fan of the more complicated, not-so-black-and-white blockbuster. Up until now, the character had always been a staple because of his amazing strength, but now Seeley has actually managed to give the character some pathos and a motivation worth reading about. Yeah, it was just a damn good time from start to finish. Overall, I would give this one a very solid 8 out of 10. So that's Nightwing for you, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it, and if I still have your attention, why not check out some of these other videos? Don't forget to follow me on social media. Links on screen and down in the description. And while you're down in the description, you might want to become a patron. Patrons get exclusive videos videos and podcasts before anyone else, and you can do so for as little as a dollar. So until next time, everyone, this has been Cape Joel. Thank you so much for watching.